Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Anda sedang menonton Suruh Pandang secara langsung dari Studio Awani di Bukit Kuala Lumpur. Sepatutnya malam ini diskusinya tentang uh, Forum Asia Pacific Roundtable ataupun APR oleh ISIS. Tapi kerana kehadiran dua penganalisis pemahati yang amat penting terhadap dimensi, terutamanya dimensi politik dan agama tentang krisis Palestin dan Israel, maka kita mengubah uh, jadual itu dan kita malam ini akan membincangkan tentang dimensi Zionism atau Zionisme dalam konflik Palestin-Israel ini kerana berdasarkan aspek teologi itu dilonjakkan pemikiran dan polisi politik. Oleh itu, saya akan berbahasa Inggeris. I would like to welcome, first of all, closest to me, Reverend Dr. Stephen Sizer uh, from Christ Church in Virginia Water, Surrey, England. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you. And Professor Achin Vanek, Professor of International Relations and Global Politics, Delhi University, India. Thank you so much uh, for making time also. I guess I would like just to go to the point where without understanding the theological aspects of the uh, Palestine-Israel crisis, maybe we would have a very flawed view and this would give us more understanding of why is it that a lot of leaders of powerful nations in the world, especially in Europe and America, sort of refuse to really solve this matter, really refusing to even acknowledge injustices being done in the land of Palestine, especially in Gaza West Bank, as it is today. So I'd like to go back all the way to how we define the Zionist movement and maybe look at your PhD work mainly on the days before uh, Israel Zionism and look at the concept of Zionism before that, maybe even in rural England. So then I will go to uh, Professor Achin Vanek and look at uh, the criteria of a state because we might end up this discussion by looking at the one or two state solution. So if I can go back to the definition of Zionism according to you and from your master's and uh, PhD uh, thesis and then look back at how that's linked to why is it when we look at, for example, I'll, I'll pick from Netanyahu's address to Congress where he said, this is the land of our forefathers, the land of Israel, to which Abraham brought the idea of one God, where David set out to confront Goliath and where Isaiah saw his vision of eternal peace. So, he, religion will be involved, but we're talking also about political mm. and land and race crisis here. So how do you look at that? Zionism is a political a uh, system, a movement that's exploited the Bible and history to justify its existence. We have to go back to the 19th century and recognize that Britain and France and Germany were colonizing much of the world in our various empires and we were placing our uh, countrymen into various parts of the world and creating colonies. Uh, Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, South Africa, just some of the uh, colonies we created in, uh, in Africa. Yes. And we need to see Israel along those lines, an ethnically pure uh, European uh, people who would work with the British in expanding our empire. We needed their support to defeat the Ottomans mm -hmm. and, uh, and therefore we promised them a homeland in our empire. And so the idea of Zionism goes back to uh, empire building, colonialism, and, uh, and the concept of ethnically pure races. Uh, so it's a form of racism. And all the quote you've just given us from Netanyahu's speech, he's going back to the Bible to justify it. 3,000 years, 4,000 years. Mm -hmm. What about the people who've lived there since then yeah. who can also quote from the scriptures mm -hmm. about their justification for being there too? Mm -hmm. So Zionism is a form of racism today. Um, and, and Israel's really got to decide whether it wants to be an inclusive, um, uh, modern society that's multi-faith, uh, multi-ethnic, uh, just as Malaysia is, just mm -hmm. as Britain is, or does it want to go down the route of South Africa and apartheid and separate whites from blacks? But to get 29 times standing ovation in Congress, both from Democrats and Republicans... I'll tell you why, because they bought every single one of those politicians. Mm -hmm. And if you find that hard to believe, answer this question. When was the last time you heard a US senator or congressman critical of Israel 
they won't dare do it because it's political suicide, because the Israel lobby will, will fund their competitors, their opponents, and they'll be out of office. In every other country in the world you ha where you have uh, democracy, where you have uh, parliamentary uh, mm -hmm. systems, you will find pro and against in every party. Mm -hmm. We do in Britain. We have Jewish, Muslim and Christian mm -hmm. politicians who will be critical of the Palestinians, critical of Israel. It's healthy debate. That does not happen in America and that's very dangerous and unhealthy for American society as much as Israel and Palestine. The lemon view from this side will be, but these are Christian leaders. And they are Christians, uh, victims too, yes. in the land of Palestine, for it's example. It's ironic that Christians in America are supporting Israel and, and destroying the church in Palestine. You were asking about the origins of Zionism. Actually, uh, Christian restorationism, the idea that Christians would restore the Jews back to the mm -hmm. land, predated Zionism by 50 years at least. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can explain uh, the ability of Israel to continue to withstand so much international opposition, resist um, uh, the United Nations, Europe, uh, and the combined Arab forces is because of the power of the uh, Christian right in America mm -hmm. alongside the Israeli lobby. It's the combination of the two. And I would argue that the Christian lobby is ten times as powerful or ten times as large as the Jewish lobby. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the combined... Uh, power of those two together uh, through finance and through uh, lobbying that ensures America, do, uh, America fulfills Israel's policies. So when one believes wholeheartedly in fulfilling prophecies of scriptures, then you can understand why women, children or even all men being bombed to pieces. It's, it's Secondary. It's very dangerous when we start to take selective verses out of the Bible and apply them to today as if prophecy is coming true. Uh, the scriptures, uh, the Hebrew and Christian scriptures need to be read in, in progressive revelation and uh, the, the overemphasis, the, uh, em the, the message that they emphasize is the inclusive nature of God's people. That's one's membership of God's people is on, on the basis of faith, not race. not race. And the land is to be shared, God insists. Mm -hmm. So the notion that you can create an ethnically pure race, uh, destroy the indigenous population, and bring in uh, uh, Jewish people from all over the world into Israel is anathema in terms of what, what God says in the scriptures. It's the selective use of the Bible uh, that, that allows Netanyahu and his friends to justify it. Prof, your views on the matter. Well, I obviously agree with what uh, Reverend Saizer has been saying. And uh, to add to the Christian right and the um, Israel lobby, you also have, of course, uh, U.S. support for Israel for uh, straightforward strategic reasons. Yes. Uh, the uh, Middle East is uh, at the center of Eurasia. It is geopolitically crucial. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's very central with regard to the question of oil and gas. Mm -hmm. So there's also that additional factor of strategic support. Um, American uh, domination of, of the Middle East has rested on a stool with four legs. Mm -hmm. um, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Israel. And now at least one positive development is that the Turkish leg and the Egyptian leg, they're not broken, but yeah. they're weakened. And okay. that's something which is also I have to go good. for the first commercial break, but once we are back, there's a lot of things that you can accuse them of being, but governizing, lobbying very efficiently. You know, it takes something. It, 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 it must be strategized well, it's, and it is done very well. I mean, I, I read Huffington, Huffington, uh, Huffington uh, Post uh, blogs today, and uh, it's almost the absence of criticism when it comes to issues of Zionism in Israel. Money. So let's go to that. In, and, you know, it's not just because they have this prophecy that they must fulfill, but they have also equipped themselves very, very strategically and well uh, in that sense, in a lot of industries, in a lot of key areas of the world, so that when the world moves on, they are at the front. So how do you sift through and take out the positive factors and alienate you know, the innocent from the accused? This is what we're going to look at in this whole six decades over of discussing Palestine and, and Israel after this.